At my job, they've moved me to a lower position. When Jack came home, he looked really sad. I was so surprised I almost dropped my tea. His company hasn't been doing well lately, and I heard they were making big changes to fix it. But I never thought it would affect Jack like this. Even so, I think it's important to support him, especially since I'm his wife. I tried to stay positive and told him not to worry because I'm still working too. My name is Lovisa and I'm 53 years old. I work full-time in the back office. I live with my husband Jack, who's two years older than me, my high school sophomore daughter Elsa, and my 75-year-old mother-in-law Freja. Freja and I don't always get along, but since I'm working outside the house, we only see each other when I'm home, so I try not to let it bother me. I told Elsa that her dad was feeling a bit down because of his job change and asked her to be supportive. But instead of opening up to her or someone else, Jack started venting all his frustrations at me. They say people often do that to the ones they trust the most. The next day, while I was cleaning the hallway on my day off, Jack walked by and suddenly said, You've gained weight since we got married, haven't you? I was taken aback. I mean, I'm 53 years old, and it's normal for women to gain weight around menopause. But according to my company's health checkup, I'm not overweight. When I mentioned that, he said, Forget the health checkup. Your figure is unsightly. You're just lazy if you're overweight. I'm embarrassed to be seen with you. Then he called me ugly and locked himself in his room. I was stunned. Why would he say such hurtful things all of a sudden? I pinched my side, feeling self-conscious. Sure, I've gained some weight, but why was he only noticing now? From then on, Jack's attitude towards me got worse. And my mother-in-law, who must have overheard our argument, started joining in. It felt like a double whammy. One day, as I was carrying a laundry basket upstairs, my mother-in-law waited at the top of the stairs instead of moving aside. She'd make comments like, It's awful that you're so fat. We can't even pass each other on the stairs. And at dinner, she'd take my plate away, saying, Isn't this what's making you fat? I could tolerate her pettiness, but what really hurt was Jack's behavior. He stopped talking to me altogether. No, thank you. No compliments. Nothing. He'd eat silently, barely acknowledging my presence. I couldn't bear feeling invisible in my own home. One night, I finally mustered up the courage to ask him why he was ignoring me. He said it wasn't anything specific, but he just didn't want to talk to someone who looked this fat. He told me to lose weight if I cared about him. I was speechless. His words crushed me. But, you know, after reaching a certain age, it's natural for your body to change, right? Despite walking two miles every day to work, I've been doing my best to stay healthy. I've been trying hard to fight off the weight gain that comes with aging. But when I tried to explain this to Jack, he coldly dismissed my efforts, saying that if I wasn't showing results, it meant I wasn't trying at all. He even told me not to speak to him anymore. From then on, Jack stopped responding to me altogether. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law continued to mock me about my weight. Whenever there was meat, fruit, or rice on the table, she'd question whether I should be eating it. Eventually, I found myself only able to eat salads and boiled vegetables. Jack just sat there, silently moving his chopsticks. It felt like my marriage was slipping away. In my spare moments, I started packing my things. If Jack was going to treat me like air, maybe disappearing altogether was the best option. When I told my daughter about my plans to go back to my parents' house, she understood. She'd seen how both her grandma and dad treated me during meals, and she didn't like it. She even offered to come with me, saying she could continue high school from there. And now, tomorrow is the day when my demotion at work officially starts, right after the winter break. Jack came home smiling, suggesting we all have a drink together, as if celebrating his new role without subordinates. But by then, I'd lost all desire to play along. Even his forced smile irritated me. During dinner, he offered to make wine spritzers. 
It was the first time he'd spoken to me directly since his demotion. He even made one for me, which was odd considering how he'd been treating me lately. While he wasn't looking, I sniffed the drink and recognized a faint smell I'd encountered before, one I'd used in cooking. How could he even think of giving me this? I couldn't take it anymore. The constant harassment from my mother-in-law, being ignored by my husband, I had to do something. So, when Jack turned away to get some cheese from the fridge, I switched my drink with the one on the seat to my right, the one usually reserved for Freja. As we sat down to dinner, I suggested we start, and my daughter was the first to speak up. Jack and my mother-in-law remained silent. I sipped on the wine spritzer Jack had made, pretending everything was normal. Then, suddenly, a red liquid shot out from my mother-in-law, like Godzilla's fire breath. Wait, what happened, Grandma? My daughter stood up, surprised, as some of the liquid splashed onto her salad. Did you choke? Are you okay? Elsa grabbed a towel and quickly returned, but as she handed the towel to my mother-in-law to wipe her mouth, she noticed something strange. What? What is that? She voiced out in shock. Grandma, your mouth. It looks like spicy cod roe. My mother-in-law began to freak out. Hey, you. He put it in my drink, she shrieked, lunging at me. I coldly brushed her hand away. It wasn't me. Jack made it. Being brushed off for the first time and hearing that Jack was responsible for the dish must have been quite a shock. What? My mother-in-law screamed, her lips still covered in sauce, then turned to look at Jack. He was shaking. I leaned towards him, resting my hand on the table to exert some pressure. You thought you could hide it in the wine spritzer, didn't you? I could smell it a little because I've used it before. That was a drop of hell wasn't it? I had bought it at the food fair in Alabama. It's not as famous as death sauce, but because it has a hint of lime, I liked it more for its homey taste. That hint of lime was what I smelled, which means he mixed a considerable amount into the drink. My mother-in-law must not have noticed due to the smell of the wine spritzer, or she might have thought the lime smell was part of the flavoring. That's probably why she drank it. But regardless, this was a seriously malicious prank. Extremely vicious. Wait, Dad did that? Elsa wore a shocked expression. I, I actually intended for Lovisa to drink it, Jack confessed, his face frothing with anger. Mother-in-law was also out of line. As soon as she found out it was meant for me, she wanted to push it onto me. No way am I switching to that dangerous drink, I said in a low voice maintaining pressure on Jack. And then I cornered him. Explain why on earth you thought of doing something so outrageous? I demanded. He replied, you were staying chubby and spicy food boosts metabolism, so I thought I'd make it. Wow, that's pathetic. What a lame excuse. I laughed sarcastically. Did he really think that explanation would be acceptable? It was utterly embarrassing. My husband hesitated and slightly moved his chair back. I'm not crazy. This is a legitimate reason to support your diet. Here, exchange this with your cup and drink it. I made it for you, he insisted. My husband retreated. I closed in, and he retreated further. What are you saying? As the one who made it, you should taste it to see if it's delicious. Come on, I challenged, moving the cup containing a drop of hell in front of my mother-in-law and throwing it in front of my husband. Then I put it aside and moved my face closer again. After ignoring me and treating me like air for so long, did you honestly think I would drink something you said you would make with a smile out of the blue? Didn't it occur to you in your empty head? Isn't it too childish? Come on, taste. It's the responsibility of the one who cooked it to take responsibility. I slammed the table, making my husband flinch. He seemed to think he could get away with a bit more backpedaling, but as I stood firm, he stood up from his chair and backed off. After a tense silence, a quiet voice spoke up. My husband and I turned to see the source, our daughter, Elsa. She began to speak slowly, as if squeezing out the words. 
Taking out your frustration on mom, who supports you the most when things don't go well at work, and repeating cruel treatments. This is like a childish prank. I might not be supposed to say this to my parents, but it's too childish and unbearable to watch. Elsa stood up too, facing her father. Is it wrong to be overweight? Mom wakes up early, walks to work, and brings lunch, so it's not like she's not trying. Then, she turned to her grandmother. And you're going along with it, taking away my mom's dinner like fried chicken. What grandma is doing is like middle school seniors and juniors. It's embarrassing. Freja began to make a confused excuse, but Elsa cut her off. That's not it. I'm just worried that mom won't gain any more weight. She must want to be seen favorably by her granddaughter. Elsa's words were harsh, but compassionate. It hurt to see mom's dinner taken away, despite her looking sad. I wouldn't call that compassion. Mom hasn't had any issues in her checkups, but still, taking away her side dishes is just mean. And then Elsa turned back to her father. Mom goes to the gynecologist every month and keeps herself active. But despite all that, dad just ignores her because she's put on some weight. What's his deal? That atmosphere he creates by ignoring her makes the house feel so tense. Can't he see that? Even Colonel Sanders and Aunt Stella from the cookie ads are plump. There's a term called happy weight, you know? If she gets older and becomes a lovely grandmother like Aunt Stella, I'd be thrilled. When I have kids and she's become a grandma, wouldn't it be great to say, Mom, you've come to some happy weight and laugh about it. That's my dream. Could you please not ruin it for me? Her gaze was cold as ice as she spoke matter-of-factly. Her words warmed my heart like hot milk with cookies. It was a pathetic sight to see a father scorned by his own daughter. And then she directed her words at her father again. If you're going to ignore someone because of weight gain due to aging, you should realize that with your thinning hair, you could easily be overlooked yourself. The tension was palpable at the dinner table. Her biting words had brought a chill to the living room. It felt so cold you'd think even a banana would freeze. It seemed she had said all she wanted to. After a pause, she turned to me. That's enough, Mom. It's time to let it go. It will be better for you. Her words took me aback. It would be better if I let go. That's right. You should let it go. As I said earlier, my dream is to see you holding my child, saying you've gained some happy weight and laughing. For my sake. I want you to be happy because that's part of my dream. So please let it go. Be happy and fulfill my dream. Her words filled my heart. Every single thing she said made me so happy that I didn't care about being ignored by my husband, the fat shaming from my mother-in-law, or the drink issue. Warm tears streamed down my cheeks. Yeah, yes, you're right, I said, my vision blurred with tears. Hurry up, mom she said, patting my back gently. Okay, I replied, overcome with emotion. I made my way to the kitchen, retrieving a document I'd hidden away for some time. My husband let out a startled exclamation when he saw it. After enduring about a month of being ignored, I began to contemplate our future. I have my bags packed. Let's each go our separate ways, I said as I presented the divorce papers, with only my name written on them. I just wanted you to lose some weight. If you had slimmed down as I asked, I would have been content. My husband confessed, panic creeping into his voice. I only realized it was venting after Elsa pointed it out. But since you didn't lose any weight, I thought I'd torment you more. I didn't mean for this to happen. It's those who didn't notice until things got serious, and what they're so upset about is incredibly childish. My daughter Elsa retorted sharply. Living without her adorable granddaughter is no joke. My mother-in-law Freja interjected, seemingly in a panic. Hey, hey, Elsa, you want to keep living with us, your grandmothers, don't you? Freja pleaded softly, but Elsa shut down her plea. I decline. I don't want to breathe the same air as people who act like middle schoolers anymore, she said firmly. Okay, hold on. 
I got it. I'll taste it, as you say. I'll take responsibility as the one who cooked it, Jack said, picking up the glass placed before him and gulping it all down at once. Just like Freja earlier, he spewed a stream of the red liquid from his mouth, resulting in a striking set of lobster-like lips. See? I took responsibility, right, Elsa? Jack said, but Elsa merely took a picture of both of them with their lobster lips on her phone and said, Both of you are so lame. Mom, let's go. Before exiting the living room, I followed her out. What was left behind was a dinner table splashed here and there with wine cocktail mixed with a drop of hell and a husband and mother-in-law with red lobster lips. Elsa and I returned to my parents' house. When we explained the situation at home, both my mother and father were furious and went to confront Jack and Freja. They brought back the divorce papers, and I ended up getting divorced. My ex-husband Jack hit rock bottom in his career and ended up spending his remaining years without any significant achievements. Apparently, he had a habit of ignoring things he didn't like, even with his subordinates, which led to his demotion, as I heard recently. On the other hand, my ex-mother-in-law Freja, who had been difficult and rarely went outside, seemed to be stuck in a stalemate in a two-person household. Eventually, I got a call saying, if you and Elsa were here, it wouldn't be so stale. This is proven by the 20 years since Elsa was born and we live together. Please come back. I'll stop ignoring you. But there's no way I'm going back. Better gain weight while you can. Once you have grandchildren, you'll have more physical work to do. My mother joked with a smile. Today, as always, I'm walking to work. On the way, my boss drives by and stops the car, offering, want a lift? No thanks, I'm on a diet, I reply. Just get in, Lovisa, he insists. Yes, I found a new boyfriend. Both of us have been divorced once, but because of that, we've both been through a lot and understand each other well, I add. Dieting is good and all, but it would be a problem if you're late, he says while driving. I've never been late before, I respond, puffing up my cheeks. He glances my way and prods my puffed up cheek with his finger. Give me the time you saved by riding in the car today for our conversation, he says, ever the talkative boyfriend.